Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, providing more than 41,000 jobs in the production of wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details at choosewood.com. It's Wednesday, June 14th. This is The Gateway. I'm Wayne Pratt. For many years, the historically black Greenwood Cemetery and the people within it were left to fade away with time. Now, an upcoming documentary is shining a new light on the value of black life. The story of Greenwood is not just the story of Greenwood. Um, It's the story of black entities, black people, black places. We're just historically not seen as valuable. Coming up, St. Louis Public Radio's Marissa Ann Lewis-Thompson speaks with the filmmaker behind the documentary. Mid-America Airport is marking a nearly $35 million terminal expansion. St. Louis Public Radio's Will Bauer reports St. Clair County leaders hope it can help the county pay debts quicker. St. Clair County Chairman Mark Kern says projects like this terminal expansion should only increase traffic, and that increased usage at the county-owned airport would in turn make the county more money. Kern says that would help pay off the existing debt, maybe in the next 10 years. We've got to continue to grow. In the meantime, the only way that you continue to grow and pay all those those bonds off. Uh, and we're, we're able to do it with more and more airport revenue all the time, which is the key. Kern and others hope a slew of additional projects will also help. The county's bill to pay for the airport stood around $120 million in 2021. Area leaders who've supported the project since the early 90s say the debt was worth it because it helped keep Scott Air Force Base open. In Mascuda, I'm Will Bauer, St. Louis Public Radio. Amtrak has announced new schedules for faster trips between Chicago and St. Louis. They begin June 26th, following testing that started last month. The trains will be going as fast as 110 miles per hour, up from the previous maximum of 90. Amtrak says the faster service could reduce travel times by roughly 20 minutes. Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker has signed a pair of workers' rights measures that offer protections during strikes. One makes it a misdemeanor to interfere with a picket line. It includes a $500 minimum fine. International Union of Operating Engineers Local 150 spokesman Ed Maher says it could apply to anti-union bystanders, but it's targeting employers. That includes employers who've put concrete blocks out and covered them with honey to attract bees, uh, dumped piles of manure, just put uh, concrete barriers to stop anybody from standing there and force them to have to stand in the road. The other measure prohibits employers from suing picketers over unintentional damage or economic loss because of a strike. This stemmed from a U.S. Supreme Court case that considered whether a company in Washington state could sue workers over concrete left in trucks during a strike. Nurses at SSM Health St. Louis University Hospital want better working conditions and increased staffing. They held a protest yesterday to back their demands. St. Louis Public Radio's Lily Halloran reports. Jessica Tolk says she's grown used to physical and verbal abuse during her time as a nurse in the emergency department. She says it's due in part to the hospital's severe lack of staff. The burden, the stress, people sitting waiting longer, people feeling like they're cared for less because we just don't have bodies to do so. That's increasing patient unhappiness and increasing patient violence. The hospital's staff vacancy rate is currently 40 percent. They've hired traveling nurses to fill the gap, but protesters say they want the hospital to retain nurses who have a stronger connection to patients. SSM Health released a statement saying they remain committed to providing quality care for patients. I'm Lily Halloran, St. Louis Public Radio. A community group is calling on St. Louis to take several steps to address downtown crime. A report from Citizens for a Greater Downtown says more police in the area is necessary, but adds other steps will be needed to deal with officer workload. The organization says some options are in a safety plan from several downtown supporter groups. It includes a call to make downtown its own police district. The community organization's report also says addressing problem properties and short-term rentals will help reduce crime in downtown and the downtown west areas. Missouri Governor Mike Parson has announced measures to give farmers emergency access to water and hay during drought conditions. They include allowing farmers to collect water at several boat ramps throughout the state. Almost 700 acres at some parks are now available for haying. The State Department of Transportation is not charging for special hauling permits to move hay, 
Parson issued a drought alert last month for 60 counties. A historically black cemetery in the Hillsdale section of St. Louis County is the subject of the upcoming documentary, The Story of Greenwood. It centers on the cemetery's origin, decline, restoration, and legacy. Ahead of its fall release, filmmaker Lucretia Griffin-Pope spoke with St. Louis Public Radio's Marissa Ann Lewis-Thompson. What was it about Greenwood Cemetery that led you to decide to make this film? My grandfather and my maternal uh, great-grandmother are both buried there. So fast forward to um, 2020, during the pandemic, I was like, maybe I should just like look into it again. So um, I started uh, doing some research, trying to find where he was buried at, like online, trying to see if I could find plot information. And I found it. And once I found that information, and I'm just like, man, this is the story of it is really, really significant to you know, St. Louis and to just Black history and history in general. So what's the story behind the cemetery and what led to its decline? Black people were not able to be buried in the white cemeteries. Cemeteries were segregated. Everything was segregated at the time. And there was a need. Black people wanted to, you know, bury their loved ones um, with dignity. And um, families would come during like holidays or even just whenever they wanted to come, they would just, you know, have picnics at Greenwood um, near their family grave sites. The families did the upkeep. So um, when Greenwood was started, there was no perpetual care fund or anything put in place. Uh, So when families paid for their plots, that's all they paid for. So in the beginning, it worked out really, really great. Like it was really successful. But with a lot of things, when desegregation happened um, during the civil rights era, it kind of started the downfall of Greenwood Cemetery because Black people were able to have other options to be buried. And with that decline, the family that owned the cemetery, they also didn't see, you know, value in it anymore as well. The cemetery became inactive in the 90s, and like many Black cemeteries in the U.S., it was neglected. What does that say about how it was viewed? This is a thing that I am touching on in the film. The story of Greenwood is not just the story of Greenwood. Um, It's the story of Black entities, Black people, Black places. Um, We're just historically not seen as valuable. You can literally take the name Greenwood out of the title and put another cemetery name in front of it, put another person's name in front of it, and it's the same story everywhere. This historically Black cemetery is the resting place of many notable figures, including Harriet Scott and civil rights activist Charlton Tandy. What other stories did you learn in the process of making this film? And did anything surprise you? It's just like never ending. It's like you're always going to find something new and something interesting and something historical at Greenwood Cemetery. There's one descendant um, that I've interviewed and her family was originally or one side of her family was originally from um, Illinois. So they were in East St. Louis and they were sadly there during the East St. Louis riots. And the story goes that they were fleeing across the bridge And a white family or a white couple saw them and they took them in and hid them until things kind of calmed down and helped them get across the bridge over to St. Louis. And one of those people that were um, in the East St. Louis riot is buried at Greenwood Cemetery. So what is the legacy of Greenwood Cemetery? It existed um, as an impact in itself like that there's a historically black cemetery with mostly black people buried there. Um, who all have stories, um, and those stories make up St. Louis. You know, they make up St. Louis history. So that would be the legacy of Greenwood Cemetery. Um, And it goes back to, you know, Black Lives Matter. Like, Black Lives Matter when people are alive, and Black Lives Matter when people are not alive. So even in death, Black Lives Matter, and, and that's the legacy of Greenwood Cemetery. That was St. Louis filmmaker Lucretia Griffin-Pope speaking with St. Louis Public Radio's Marissa Ann Lewis-Thompson about her upcoming documentary, The Story of Greenwood. Our Jonathan All edited that report. Ashley Listenby is the news director of St. Louis Public Radio, a listener-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I'm Wayne Pratt.
Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, providing more than 41,000 jobs in the production of wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details at ChooseWood.com.